let's explore the key elements of the filter condition builder. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding how to use your filter condition builder to extract a subset of data that matters to you most. I'm going to hop over to my personal developer instance, and I'm on the Tokyo version. By the way, if you haven't picked up your free personal developer instance, what are you waiting on? Head over to developer.servicenow.com. Now, in the title bar, this is where we'll find our filter condition builder. I'm going to zoom in. See this funnel icon? this actually opens up the filter condition builder. And at the very top, you'll find the condition builder toolbar. And it has six different buttons that we can choose from. We have run, save. We have top level conditions of and, or. We also have add sort and the pin icon. Let's go ahead and set up a filter. So let's select active is true and assigned to is Beth Anglin. Now, by the way, you certainly can be following along with me in your own personal developer instance. That will give you some great hands-on experience. And then to run this, we'll select the Run button at the very top in the Condition Builder toolbar. So now we have a list of records, a subset of data of records that are active that are all assigned to Beth Anglin. Now we can do a little bit more with this filter. Let's say we, let's say we want to save it. We'll select the filter icon again, and we'll select save. We'll be prompted to give it a name. So we will call this filter incidents Beth Anglin. Now it's always important to give it a name that will make sense to you later. And we will select save. Now before we do that, I want to point out that depending on your role, you can save this filter just for yourself. You can save it for everyone or a group. For our purposes today, I'll just save it for myself. I'll select save. All right. Now we'll go back to the incident list. Now to do so, we'll take a look at the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs basically give you a summary of your filter condition builder. We have all Active is true, assigned to is Beth Anglin. We're going to select all to remove all of the conditions. All right, now let's say that we want to go back to that filter that we just saved. Well, we'll go back to the list control menu. We'll zoom in this, these three horizontal lines, upper left-hand corner. We'll go to filters, and there it is. Incidents, Beth Anglin. We can also get rid of it, we can go to edit personal filters. Let's say we no longer need it. We'll select that filter, go back to the list title bar, go to the actions on selected rows, and we'll select delete. Now keep in mind, we're not deleting the records, we're only deleting the filter. And we'll hit delete to confirm. We're gonna go back to the incident table, or the incident list. So I'm gonna do that by just navigating to history, and going to incidents. Now, if you're a bit nervous, like, wait a minute, did I get rid of all of those records that were assigned to Beth? <laughs> no, not at all. We're going to run that filter one more time just to confirm. So we'll say active is true and assigned to is Beth Anglin. And we'll run that filter again and rest assured, there are your records. We'll go back to the breadcrumbs. And to get rid of this, well, let's play around a little bit here. Let's say, so our breadcrumbs tell us that our filter conditions are all is true, active is true, and assigned to is Beth Anglin. Let's say that we want to get rid of active being true. We want to just get rid of a middle condition. What we would do is select the filter separator to the left of the condition that we want to get rid of. And now we have all assigned to as Beth Anglin. Now I'm going to go ahead and just select all. That will get rid of everything to the right. So I'm going to select all, and this will give us a list of all of the incidents on the incident list. Let's go ahead and set up another condition. So we'll select the funnel icon. All right, so let's play around with this a little bit more. So we'll select active is true. And priority is one. 
And let's also say, and it's assigned to is the ITIL user. And let's hit run. So we'll get a subset of data that match the criteria that we set up. So as we see, we have the ITIL user in the assigned to field. Okay, now let's say, well, wait a minute. Let's say that we actually want to get not just the priority one incidents, but we also want to get the priority two. Let's open that filter again. Now, if we want priority two, we need to add a dependent condition. So let's go to the right of priority and say, or the priority is high or level two. We'll hit run again. And once again, we get that subset of da data. See, we see the critical, the level ones, and the high, the level two. Now, why did we select the and to the right and not the and at the top? Well, the conditions at the top, those are top level conditions. So if we were to select that instead, it will give us priority two records without regard to who the assigned to person is. So we're gonna remove the priority is high as the dependent condition. We'll go to the top and say, or priority is two. And you'll see that we will get records of priority two from a variety of different users. And let's select run. Let's take a look at the data. And see here, when you go to the assigned to, notice how we have not just the ITIL user, but we also have other users as well. Let's back out of this. Let's return back to the condition builder. All right, we'll remove this run this again, and notice how those records disappear. And we just have those priority two records of the ITIL user. Okay, fantastic. Let's take a closer look at the breadcrumbs again. In the breadcrumbs, it gives us a summary of what we just built out in the filter condition builder. All active is true, priority equals one critical, assigned to is the ITIL user. Let's get rid of all these conditions and select all. This will return us to all of the items, all of the records on the incident list. Now, be sure you stay tuned to the next video. I'm gonna show you the magic of right-clicking and the power of context menus. I'll see you there. Let's go.